Good morning everyone, I hope you are all well. As you can see from the title of this video, today's topic is why box name. Why box name is my daily driver. But before we all dive deeper into the subject, let me quickly introduce myself for those who don't know me. My name is Rafal, I am originally from Poland. I live in UK, I have been flying FPV since late 2016. I fly for fun as well as commercially. I had all FPV systems in the past, but I settled down on, on walk snail. And uh, the easiest way for me to explain why is by pointing at the wall behind me. What you can see over there is 17 drones. Two of them are analog and the rest of them are walk snail. All different sizes, starting from tiny whoop to um, two inch cine whoop, three inch cine whoop, three inch fish freestyle drone, two peaks, five inch freestyle, five inch racer, seven inch long range and a wing. Thanks to big variety of VTXs, I can build drones in any size and as I said earlier I live in UK where weather isn't great especially this year this week I think it's the first week when we can finally feel some summer with temperatures going over 20 degrees until now we had probably more rainy and windy days than we had sunny days so being able to build something as small as tiny whoop and fly around my garage garden or house is just amazing keeps me in the air the second reason why I think Voxner is so great, is prices. This system is probably the most affordable uh, HD system on the market currently, uh, with VTXs starting at £70 or $89, Goggles X are £459, $459 directly from Cadix. I think they are great value for money. The third reason is community and the fact that Voxnail is listening to their pilots and they're doing their best to shape their system to meet our needs and expectations. Customer support has also been great, never had any issues out of all the VTXs that they have. I and mean, we're gonna talk about durability, I guess, as well. I've only burned one, one as VTX, and this was purely my fault because I landed in the wet grass. I emailed Cardix to ask them if they can help me out, if, they, if there's any chance that they can fix it. Within a month or two, I had my VTX back and my toothpick up in the air again. Yes. I understand there are issues because I can see obviously people complaining about range and penetration being poor, their goggles overheating. I had my goggles X from day one, never overheated. I did replace my heat sink about two months ago, although I don't think I had to. They've always been great for me. In terms of range and penetration, as I said earlier, the prices are very competitive and I understand, or I can imagine, they are so low because Cadix had to cut them somewhere and one of those cuts could be possibly the stock antennas. They are okay, they will keep you in the air and you can have fun at the close range, but don't assume that you can do long range out of the box. If you are planning to do long range, I would strongly advise you to update your antennas. For instance, this is my current setup with true RC stubbies at the top and the patch in the middle, uh, walk snake patch. This is great for close range. I can go to the park, I can have fun at the, the, the small bundle. It's great. But if I have to penetrate a few walls, let's say, on an indoor flight, I would end up putting through RC patches on the top. Especially there, because that's where transmitting antenna is. And then stubbies will go at the bottom with this middle patch completely disconnected. What I'm trying to say is learn about system, learn about limitation, try to plan your flight path and position yourself accordingly so you can cover the whole area. Let's briefly talk about other systems that are available out there, so just so we can compare them quickly to Voxnail, because this will give you a bigger picture of why Voxnail is my daily driver. So the second system is probably one of the most popular ones. DJI, great video quality, probably better range and penetration out of the box than Voxnail, Unfortunately for me, the limiting factor is the VTXs. There are only three of them available out there and none of them is small enough to let me, let's say, build a tiny whoop. I also have to admit that I am not the biggest fan of their BS marketing. I don't like the fact that, let's say, they are releasing a new drone which is incompatible with older generation goggles, but only for the first two months because the firmware is locked. Doing so, they are forcing their loyal customers to spend money on a new product on the full kit basically that comes with the goggles and a new controller which isn't something that they need or they won't need in the next few months because DJI will end up unlocking that drone eventually. Um, the third system is HD0, um, fantastic system but designed for uh, racing pilots. With its low latency it's perfect for races. 
Unfortunately, range and penetration isn't so great. Therefore, that's the limiting factor for me. That's why I decided to move on to Voxnail. I had HD0 in the past as well as DJI. I still have DJI V2 goggles, but I keep them mainly because from time to time I need to fix a drone or do a new build for someone and I need to be able to test it properly. So hopefully right now you know why Voxnail is my daily driver. All I would like to see Voxnail doing in the future is a clean HDMI out. So I like to be able to send the signal out of my goggles to an external monitor without OSD. And also I would like to see finally Wi-Fi working so we can maybe stream a video directly from the goggles via Wi-Fi to any platform and also possibly download the DVR and maybe even update the firmware on the goggles. That would be great. Those are two things that I would like to see in the future. Other than that, Cardix slash Voxnail. Keep up the good work. You're doing very well and I will continue to support you. I hope you liked it. Enjoyed it. I will see you at the next one. Take care. Peace.